Let's solve some numericals on quantum nature of light on photons. Here's the first one. We have a bulb of 100 watt, 100 watt light bulb, that's giving out a f light of frequency four times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, according to the quantum nature, the bulb is releasing photons, it's emitting photons. And so the question is, how many photons are being emitted per second by this light bulb? How do we solve this? The first thing that comes to my mind is I know how to calculate energy of a single photon. That is, from Planck's equation, it's going to be the Planck's constant h multiplied by the frequency of light. So that's energy of a single photon. And I know Planck's constant, I know the frequency, so I can calculate the energy of each photon. Okay, now from that, how do I calculate the number of photons emitted per second? How do I do that? Well, I'm given the power output, meaning I know that this bulb is emitting 100 joules of energy per second. That's the meaning of what? Let me write that down. So I know power is 100 joules per second. This much energy is given out per second. Now, using this and the energy, and, and I know the energy of the photon, how do I figure out the number of photons emitted per second? Can you pause and think about it? All right, so to relate these two, if I can relate these two, I'm done. This is sort of like total energy and this is like energy of one photon, so I can just relate them. So the way I like to relate them is, let's say this number, number of photons emitted per second, let's say this is n. If there are n photons coming out per second, and if each photon has this much joules of energy, then the total energy coming out per second must be n times e, right? Think about it, if this was two joules, and there are 100 photons coming out per second, that means total energy would be 100 times two, 200. <laughs> so I know that total energy coming out per second has to be n times E. And I know that has to be 100 joules per second. <laughs> so now I can just equate this and I can calculate what N is going to be. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can and continue this and solve for, for N. All right, let's do this. So let me separately first calculate what the energy of the photon is going to be. Oh, let me just substitute over here. Okay, this is going to be, what's the Planck's constant? 6.63, I'm just gonna 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power minus 34 joules second. And the frequency is four times 10 to the power 14 hertz. Hertz is one over second. It's always nice to, whenever possible, use units and make sure that we're getting the right units. So this cancels out, you get joules that we want. And that gives us how much? Six fours are 24. So we get a four here, two gets carried. Six fours are 24 again, 26.4 times 10 to the power, minus 34 plus 14 is minus 20 joules. So now I know this number, so I can calculate N. N is going to be 100 joules per second, the power, divided by the number of uh, energy of each photon that's given here. So that is 26.4 times 10 to the power minus 20 joules. And that gives me, uh, I think I now need my calculator. <laughs> so let me bring in my calculator. I have 100 divided by 26.4, and that gives me 3.8. So let me just get this, all right. So I get 3 point, let me use blue. Oops, okay, 3 point, what is that, eight, right? 3.8 times, so this is 3.8, 10 to the power 20. Joules cancels, and so I get per second. So 3.8 times 10 to the power 20 photons per second. And there you go. This is how many photons are emitted per second. It's an extraordinarily large, uh, large number. And these are very realistic values. So if you have a tube light or a bulb right in front of you, switch it on and just imagine these many photons are coming out per second. Okay, let's try another one. This time we have a laser light 
of the same frequency as before. I'm taking the same frequency so that I don't have to recalculate. We can use the same energy calculation we did before for each photon. So the photons have the same energy because the frequency is the same. So this time we have a laser light of this frequency which is incident on a wall. And this time intensity is given to us. And the question is again, what is the number of photons this time hitting the wall per second? So how do we solve this? The first step is the same as before, uh, earlier, we've done that. I know the energy of every single photon, that is something I know. But I don't know the power, because if I did, then I can do the same thing as I did before. This time intensity is given. What's the meaning of intensity? What's the difference between intensity and power? Well, as you can see from the units itself, intensity is power per area. So it's telling me that five joules of energy per second is incident per meter square. If I had one meter square area, then this much energy would be incident per second. But that energy is incident only on two centimeters square. Hmm. So the first step would be to calculate how much is the power in two centimeters square. I know the power in one meter square is this much. What is the power in two centimeters square? Once I figure that out, then I can solve this just like before, in like just like in the previous numerical. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can try doing this on your own now. All right, one of the things that you might be seeing is I'm not, I'm, I'm not using some formula for intensity and, and substituting because I like to do it logically. And whenever you try, whenever you do things logically, it makes a lot more sense. And of course, um, it becomes more fun also to do this. All right, so I know intensity. From that, how do I calculate power? So the first step I know is I want to calculate is how much is the power incident in that two centimeter square? So power would be intensity, intensity. This is power per area. So to calculate power, I have to do intensity into area. Does that make sense? Intensity is power per area. Okay, so what is that? I know the intensity is five watt per meter squared. Five watt over meter squared. Multiplied by area, area is two centimeters squared. Now I have a centimeter squared and I have a meter squared, so let's convert that. And again, the way I like to do this, keeping it simple, I know one centimeter is 10 to the power minus two meters, right? One meter is 100 centimeters, so one centimeter is 10 to the power minus two meters. But I need a centimeter squared, so I need to square this. So one centimeter squared would be 10 to the power minus four meters squared. So that means I can just replace this I just delete this and I can say this is two times 10 to the power minus four meter squared. So that will give me, meter square cancels, I get five times two is 10. 10 times 10 to the power minus four is 10 power minus three. Make sense? So that many watts or joules per second. That is how much energy that is dumped on this wall every second. Okay, now from that, how do I calculate how many photons are dumped on this wall per second? Well, just like before, I'm gonna say, let's let's say there are n number of photons hitting the wall per second. Whenever you don't know something in physics or maths or any problem, call it n or call it x. <laughs> now, if there are n photons hitting per second, just like before, and if the energy of photon is E, then the total energy hitting per second must be n times E. So this should equal n times E. And therefore, n, number of photons hitting the wall per second should be 10 to the power minus three joules per second divided by E, which is, we've calculated before, that's 26.4 times 10 to the power minus 20. How much will this be? Well, again, I think I need my calculator. So let me bring that in. So I'm gonna do one divided by 26 point one divided by 26.4, that gives me 0 0.038, oh, same thing as before, I didn't need it, okay. 0 0.038, 0 0.038, 0 0.038, 0 0.038, 0 0.038, okay. 0 0.038 times 10 to the power, I have a minus three, I have a minus 20, so plus 20 you get minus 17. No, sorry, plus 17, plus 17 plus 20 minus three is plus 17. And this is joules, so joules cancels out per second. So these many photons per second. And of course we can convert this into, we can call this as 38 
So one, two, three, so I'm borrowing three tenths. That means 10 to the power 17 minus three is four, sorry, 14. So 10 to the power 14 photons per second. So that many photons are hitting the wall per second. Finally, I have a couple of bonus questions for you, which I want you to think about without you looking at any of this. What if I were to increase the frequency of light, but I kept the intensity exactly the same? What would you expect to happen to this number? Would now there be more photons hitting this wall per second? Or do you expect less number of photons to hit the wall per second? Can you pause and think about that? All right, here's how I'm thinking. If I increase the frequency, then the energy of each photon would increase. That means that each photon now is carrying more energy than before. And so I would need less number of photons to carry this, this much energy. That means the number of photons should reduce. Does that make sense? And if, if, even if you think, look at it over here, that makes sense. Uh, energy of each photon has increased, but the intensity has stayed the same. So this number stays the same. So now the number of photons would reduce. Okay, another question. Again, don't look at this, but just think logically. What if I keep the frequency the same, but I increase the intensity? Now what will happen to the number of photons hitting this wall? What do you think will happen? All right, now, because the frequency is kept the same, the energy of the photon would stay the same. Each photon would carry the same energy. But I'm increasing the intensity, so I've increased the total energy input, and therefore, that means it, there'll be more photons hitting the wall. So you can see, if I keep the frequency the same, and when I increase the intensity, I'm increasing the number of photons that are hitting the wall.